ManuS and welcome back to the next part of the MTG Arena set review for Ravnica Allegiance with part 1 of the red cards. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification icon to not miss out on the rest of the series. And now on to the red cards. <coughs> okay, so first off we have good old Act of Treason with a new artwork. Um, in Constructed this card occasionally makes it into sideboard of red aggressive decks in small numbers, one or two usually, so nothing new here. In Limited, this um, highly depends on how well it plays in, say, um, Ragdos or Gruul, but could be a decent card in Limited as like a one-off. There could also be some synergies with some of the Sacrifice outlets in Black and Ragdos, so that makes the card go up in uh, value a bit if you have some of those, but um, the ones that I can think of are a bit restricted and don't fit an aggressive deck that well because they require you to sack two creatures and stuff like that. Next we have Amplifier. This is a kind of interesting card. In Constructed it's a bit too gimmicky and fragile, but in Limited uh, this seems like a fairly strong 4-drop. So you get a 1-1 one -one that at the beginning of your upkeep reveals cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a creature card and until your next turn Amplifier um, gets the power and toughness of that creature plus two. Uh, not plus two, twice the power and toughness of that creature. So um, if you reveal a 2-2, two -two, Amplifier becomes a 4-4 four -four, for example until your next turn. So it also blocks with those stats, so except for the first turn that you play it, it basically is a pretty big body every turn. And yeah, the revealed cards are just put on the bottom in any random order, so you're not milling yourself, but you're also not enabling any graveyard synergies. All in all, seems like a pretty strong 4-drop in Limited to me. Next we have Burn Bright, um, basically Rally for um, my Eternal Viewers, and yeah, for Magic Viewers, just an okay card, I guess, not that great. There's not much go white synergies. There are a couple of afterlife cards in black that might also end up in a Ragdoss deck, but not that likely because most of them were pretty expensive and understated, so not good for aggressive decks. And without um, much go white potential, these cards usually aren't very good. So this seems pretty bad, even in limited. And in constructed, there are better payoffs for going white. Next we have Burning Tree Vandal, another card that has no constructed implications. It's a 3-mana 2-1 that when it attacks you uh, may discard a card and if you do draw a card. So um, yeah, Ravage I think it's called at this point or like reverse looting. And it has Riot so it's either a 3-cost 2-1 haste or a 3-2. Um, nothing too terrible here, seems like a decent card in limited but not great since the stats are just a bit weak. Um, next we have a Cavalcade of Calamity. Two mana enchantment when a creature you control attacks with power one or less. Um, Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is controlling. Basically similar to the, um, to the card we had in Ultimate Masters, I forgot the name, three mana enchantment that deals one damage whenever a creature you control with two or power two or less attacks. So this is a worse and smaller version, making it significantly worse in limited. Also, it's an uncommon, so it's not uh, the same kind of built around potential that the uh, one in Ultimate Masters had. So yeah, I doubt this is going to be very playable, even in limited and in constructed, it is even worse. Um, power one or less is just very restrictive. Next we have Cla uh, Clamor Shaman, so it's 3 mana 1-1 one, one with Riot, so either 1-1 one, one Haste or 2-2, two, two. and every time it attacks, target creature and opponent controls can't block. So most of the time I assume you will end up playing this as a 1-1 one, one Haste to get immediate payoff, and then hope it survives the combat maybe to get another uh, crack in. Like for example if you play this on the play on turn 3, with haste, you usually should be able to get in for uh, one damage plus whatever the size your two drop has, and then you might get the payoff a second time on the next turn, but then the opponent will be able to eat the shaman most likely. 
so not that great. Um, fairly hyper aggressive, but a bit too fragile. Sorry, a bit too fragile and understated, I would say, and also clearly not a constructed card. Next we have <coughs> Dagger Caster. Uh, four mana, two, three. Kind of understated here, but when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and one damage to each creature your opponent controls. Making this a pretty decent card in limited, clearing, for example, afterlife tokens and a bunch of the yeah lower statted uh, creatures in the format. There's a fair share of things this kills, and also uh, might yeah finish off some stuff post combat. But the opponent thought they had a safe block and stuff, making this all in all a pretty good looking limited card, even though the body is lacking. Um, but yeah, also not a constructed card. Next we have Deface, um, destroy target artifact or destroy target creature with Defender. Um, there are not a whole lot of artifacts in this format worth destroying, so that part is pretty useless. And just to destroy Defenders, this is also way too weak. Might be a very fringe sideboard card in Limited. And in Constructed, this might actually be an okay sideboard card, um, but there are probably better op options to deal with um, artifacts and just for the defender thing you probably wouldn't want to end up playing it in Constructed. But if the artifact part turns out good enough and this is the card you want over other options, then uh, sometimes getting to bring it in against a bunch of walls uh, on the off chance could be a nice upside. Okay, next we have Electro Dominance. This is a pretty big one for Constructed, even in Modern. So basically, for two red and X, you get to deal X damage to a target of your choice, and you may cast a card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So first of all, this lets you uh, play cards like Ancestral Vision, uh, Living End, and so on for free and gives you a whole slew of new options. We already had a basically monocolor uh, living end with as foretold and that sort of stuff. And now Electro Dominance adds options there. And there are a whole lot of things you could do with this in Modern potentially trying to break this. Definitely a pretty interesting card and does some pretty powerful, unique stuff. So um, curious to see uh, how this pans out in Modern. In standard, this still seems like it could be fairly good since it's basically uh, a fireball with significant upside that is instant and costs one red more for being instant and having that upside, which seems like a pretty good deal. Or rather, blaze, not fireball. And yeah, um, I could definitely see this uh, also uh, being playable in uh, in standard. And the fact that um, you get to play a card from your hand also means, if I'm not mistaken, the way it works is that you get also get to play certain cards as instant that you otherwise couldn't, thanks to the card allowing you to play them. Like you just play this at the end of your opponent's turn and get to play a sorcery uh, for free, for example, from your hand, which is another nice upside. And in limited, of course, cards like this are always really strong, so this is an easy first pick. Next we have Feral Marker, nothing to say here, Grizzly Bear, fine curve filler and limited. Next we have Flames of the Race Boar, it deals 4 damage to target creature and opponent controls, and then if you have the 4 power or greater uh, metric applied, like have a big enough creature, it also deals 2 damage to each other creature that player controls, making it a pretty nice sweep effect, but a bit expensive. Like especially if you don't have a creature with power four or greater, this is pretty weak. Six mana to deal four damage to a creature is a pretty bad rate. But if uh, you have a creature and the two damage lines up well, this can be very devastating. So it seems okay, but not that great. <clears throat> Next we have uh, Gates Ablaze. Another gate synergy card that already is finding its way into uh, gate-based standard decks, even. Um, deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of gates you control. Um, 
making this a nicely scaling like pyroclasm type effect which is really nice as long as you play enough gates and same goes in limited um kind of yeah drafting around um gates is uh is an option and this is one of the bigger payoffs here so um yeah great in the specific archetype and pretty unplayable otherwise so we have one more row to go before um, we continue with the rest in the second part. Next we have Gorklan Wrecker, basically a hill giant that can also be a 2-2 haste instead. And in addition it comes with menace. Um, so yeah, nothing too special here, but a 3-3 menace or a 2-2 menace haste is pretty decent. So seems like a solid uh, limited card for more aggressive decks. Next we have Goblin Gathering. You create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin uh, tokens equal to 2 plus the number of cards named Goblin Gathering in your graveyard. So basically the first one is an overcasted dragon fodder and the second one is an undercasted uh, outburst. Which is pretty solid, like especially limited if you can uh, get a couple of these. This can be really nice at least in Ragdoss to enable spectacle and to feed some of the mentioned sack outlets, that sort of stuff. Uh, in constructed, however, with 60 card decks and only four copies of these, this seems pretty underpowered. And last but not least, we have the red card with the cruel activation cost, Gravel Hide Goblin. It's a two mana, two one. So underwhelming for a two drop, but for four mana, you uh, can give it plus two plus two until end of turn, making it a decently scaling two drop. Nothing too exciting, the one toughness can be really problematic, but the ability compensates for it nicely, so I would say it's at least at the same level as uh, something like the Feral Marker, a regular hill giant, maybe slightly better. But um, there's a fair share of things uh, that we know that punish being only one toughness in this format, so that might uh, just end up making a solid grizzly bear a bit better. Okay, this concludes part one of uh, the red cards. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Um, leave a comment, let me know what you think about the reviews and where you agree or disagree with me. Also, if you enjoy the videos, hit the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more. Um, one last uh, request, if you wanna uh, help support the free content, please consider whitelisting YouTube on your ad block. That's a great way to support the content for free, just giving me a little bit of your time by checking out the ads and helping support the channel that way. Okay, that's it again for this time. I'm your host, Manu S. This was part one of the red cards. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with part two. Bye.